Hi everyone and welcome to the Zana tutorial series. This is part 5. In this part, we'll continue from where we left off in the last part and we'll set up the login screen. Similarly how we did the sign up screen um, with, with a few changes. And before we begin, I'd like to mention this one small change that I made in the login endpoint. Uh, if you notice in the body, I've changed it from sign up email to login email and same as the case with login password. This is just to avoid any confusion. Uh, now what we'll do is we'll set up these inputs for their own stream variables. So we'll go here, we'll select a new stream variable and we'll call it email value. So as the name suggests, screen variables have a screen level scope. So screen variables that we created on the sign up screen, we can't access them here on the login screen. So that's why we can use the same names here as well. So password value for password. Uh, these two things are set up. Uh, the error variable, make sure it's mapped to error message. And then we have the solid button and we can set up our actions here. So the list of actions would be the same as on our signup page, apart from one change that this time we will be doing the login endpoint and we will save the response as login response. Uh, we'll give them the body. The body would have password value and email value. And this action is set up. Uh, the next action was to extract key that was the auth token so we can do that here as well for input we will take login response path would be dot auth token uh, the result name we can save as that auth token this is set up and then we'll extract the error message key in case there was an error while logging in so we can do another extract key Input would be login response again, and this time the path would be dot message. And we can save it as error message. Then we would set up our global variable for error. So set variable, error message, and we'll input a new value error message in case there was an error this will populate our global variable then we can have a conditional stop to check if we got the odds token or not so conditional stop we will use the odds token from our action result we will transform it with negate so if there is no value here it will return true which will kick in the conditional stop and you can't do any more actions here. After that, we would set up the global variable for our auth header. The value would be, if in case it was a successful signup, we'll have a value in auth token. And don't forget to add a bearer prefix here. And then we can use the navigate action to navigate to our home screen. So that has been set up. Let's quickly test it out. We would need to use an email address that we have already registered with. So I'll use the one that we used for our sign up. And then the password. And then I can hit login. Successfully signed up. And we were taken to our home screen. And we can see the auth token that we received. So this is just a debug. Uh, text that you can use to show if you got the auth token and it was saved successfully. So that's how you would set up the login endpoint, exactly the same way how we did the sign up endpoint. And now let's quickly try and get the auth me endpoint set up in this video itself. So to set up the auth me endpoint, one thing that you would like to do is we would have to save a value in our global auth token. So we can use the login endpoint, get the token value here, and we can copy this and then we would go to our global variable 
go to device variables and auth header. What we will do is we'll enter this temporary value for us to test the auth main endpoint. So we can do bearer and then we'll paste the auth token that we got from the login endpoint and save this. I'll show you why we do this. So now we have our auth, a valid auth token stored in our global variable. Now we can set up the auth me endpoint. We'll add an endpoint. You can call it me or auth me. I'll call it auth me for simplicity. For the path, you can go to the Zano backend and get to the auth me endpoint. And you can copy the path from here. Let's me. For some reason, it's not. There we go. Sorry about that. So we can copy this. We'll paste that here. And now, one thing that we would want to do is we would add another header. That would be the authorization header. This is required because um, the autme endpoint is a secured endpoint, and we would need an authorization header of a user to identify who the user is. So authorization. And here we would use the auth header that has already been set up. So now you notice why I set up a default value there. So that's the value it will take now to test the endpoint. There we go. So a successful result. And it shows me that the name of the user who signed up is DraftBit and their email address as well. So we can save that. And now we have the Autumn endpoint set up as well. I hope this was an easy tutorial to follow. Uh, let me know if you have any questions. I'll be happy to respond. Thank you and happy building.